In this video series, we're going to see how to parse and consume a JSON stream in C Sharp and Visual Studio 2017. So we're going to start with a JSON stream we've seen a little bit before, uh, which is this one from Plant Places, which is showing a collection of plants. Uh, you're welcome to use this URL if you wish as you're writing your own app or as you're testing your own application. If we visualize this, we can take it to jsonviewer.stack.hu and we can see this kind of construction. So the question is, how do we go from this to something we can actually use in a C-sharp application? Well, there are several steps. First of all, we have to figure out where to get the JSON. Next is the tricky part. We have to plan the classes that are going to hold that JSON data. Next, we have to use a JSON convert .deserialize object, which is from the JSON.NET library to actually read the JSON and put it into the classes that we created in the previous step. Now we have to take that conversion and we have to put it into what's called a using block and then we need to use webclient.downloadString to get the raw JSON and then we pass that raw JSON to this deserialize object method. So if you notice the steps feel a little bit out of order because the last thing that we do is figure out how to actually read the stream of JSON. But it is important that we plan these things this way because we have to think about what we want the JSON to look like once it's pushed into a series of objects in our project. So let's look at these steps one at a time. We'll start with planning the classes. Now I showed you uh, that we have this uh, map of JSON in a tree-like structure. And what we have to think about is if I look at this JSON on my screen here, how do I map that to a series of classes that are going to hold data? Well, one thing we know about JSON is that a curly brace indicates an object in square brackets indi indicates a collection or a list of similar types of objects. Now, here again, it's easiest to go in reverse order. You're tempted to tar start at the top, but let's start all the way down at the leaf here where we have zero, one, and two. So first of all, the first object we are going to the, the, the curly and the zero, or the curly and the one, the curly and the two. Uh, we need to make a class called plant with attributes that match this, ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. Okay, so that's going to cover each of these repeating sets here. One class called plant and the zero, the one, the two, the three, so on and so forth. Each of those represent an object of that plant. Okay, now let's handle the square brackets. The square brackets is a collection. The easiest way to handle this is with what we call a strongly typed collection. In other words, we can have a collection called list and we can provide a generic type called plant, which says this list that we're making can only hold plant objects. Now what's a plant object? Well, that's what we made up above in the step up here. Uh, make a class named plant. So first we make the class which represents the zero here. Then we make the list or the square brackets, which are going to contain all of these plants. So that's why I say it's easiest to work in reverse order. So we've started at the leaf, we've gone up to the object, now the collection of objects. Up one layer from that is something called JSON, and that kind of is our root element. Well, what we need to make for that is we need to make a class which contains an attribute or a variable. And the variable is what we declared up above in our second bullet point. So let's look at an example of how this all fits together. Notice this class called plant that I have here. Take a look at these attributes. ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. Now let's go back. ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. You see how it kind of marries up there based on a naming convention. Okay, now take a look at this class called plant collection and see what it has. It has a strongly typed list of type plants, okay? And that is called plants. And then there's a public accessor available for it, also called plants with a capital P. Do you notice how this plant right here is the same as this plant right here? And this is contained in something called plant collection. So here we have plant, list of plants, plant collection. Now, let's take a look at how we can actually take the JSON data and we can feed it into this object series that we've made. Uh, we use something in the JSON net package called JSON convert .deserialize object. Now pay very special attention to this line. This is a very important line and everything that we're looking at here is important. First of all, 
we have a variable called plant collection, uh, and that is of type plant collection. A subtle difference in capitalization, capital P means the class plant collection, lowercase p in this case means a variable. So if we look at this part, we are declaring a variable. Now we have an assignment, and what happens on the right? JSON convert dot deserialize object. Now the most important part of this line are these last two items we're looking at. Number one, a generic identifier. Number two, a JSON stream. So let's start with this JSON stream. This is a single string that represents raw JSON data. In other words, raw JSON here, this represents all of the text that you see on my screen right here. Now, the generic here, the generic plant collection, who is that? Remember, that's this guy right here, which owns the list of plants. And so what we're saying is take the raw JSON string, parse it out, populate it into an object of type plant collection, take that object of type plant collection, save it into this variable called plant collection. It's a little tricky, but after this line executes, assuming it executes properly, we're good. And plant collection is now populated with a list of plants, specifically the list of plants we're returning from our JSON stream. Okay. Uh, now, after we have figured this all out, we need to actually retrieve the JSON stream, and we're going to do that with a using block. Using is what we use when we have some kind of resource that needs to be closed. So using, and you see new web client. So web client is how we can download data from the internet. So uh, if you take a look at this first line, string raw JSON equals web client dot download string. That means get me the JSON data that we see at this link, in, in our case, because that's the link I've passed in here, and store it into the string called raw JSON. Second, we see plant collection, plant collection equals JSON convert dot deserialize object. Hopefully that feels a bit familiar because it's what we saw on our previous slide. And so that is, uh, that is going to take this JSON and it's going to parse it out. Once it's parsed it out, we can use a dot notation like you see here to access the collection of plants that we got from the JSON. So this is an overview of how we can parse JSON. In our next video, we will use what we've learned in this presentation and we will actually parse some JSON. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.